Unit 5, Section 2, we're going to take a closer look at some interesting legumes. Uh, first one we're going to take a look at is peanuts. A lot of people don't think of peanuts as a legume, tend to think of them as a nut, but they are, in fact, not a nut. The history of peanuts. Peanuts are interesting for several reasons, I think, one of which is this history. They're native to Central and South America, and they were an important food source for Native Americans in that region. The Spanish took peanuts back to Europe, and they spread around Europe via the European trade. They became extremely popular in arid areas of Africa because they can withstand uh, heat and drought and still produce a crop and the food is valuable from them. They were then brought to North America from either Europe or European colonies. So this plant that was native to the Americas, Central and South America, is introduced to North America from Europe because it ended up being taken over there uh, by the original conquistadors from South America. Another reason they're interesting is they're just an unusual plant. They flower above ground. Makes sense, right? But the peanuts develop below ground. How does that happen? After fertilization, the flower stalks begin to elongate and they push the flower into the soil underground. Once the flower stalk has pushed the flower underground, the fruit then develops there. Peanuts also contain from 45 to 50 percent oil and 25 to 30 percent protein. This is one of the things that makes them an excellent food source. Peanuts were so prominent in prehistoric South America that they crafted gold and silver jewelry in the shape of peanuts. And as I mentioned before, they're not nuts, but actually legumes um, closely related to beans and peas. Here's a photograph showing how peanuts appear on the plant. And you can see, you know, soil on the peanuts because they've been pulled up from out of the ground. You can see how this plant grows, this part portion underground, but even the stem that grows above ground here and here lays over flat and the flower stalks have elongated and they have pushed the flowers and the developing fruit below ground. It's thought that perhaps this is a reaction to protect the developing seeds from predators, but the peanuts develop completely in the soil. Peanut products, well, in the United States, we consume more than a billion pounds of peanuts per year, mainly as snack foods. We don't eat them much as a, a staple. And half of the U.S. peanut crop is used to make peanut butter. Uh, here's a picture of George Washington Carver, um, sort of the father of the peanut industry in America. He was the son of a slave and was a researcher at the Tuskegee Institute. What he really wanted to do was revitalize agriculture in the South. After decades and decades of growing cotton, uh, the soil in the South was depleted of nutrients um, and they were having trouble producing even basic crops. Peanuts being a legume add nutrients, particularly nitrogen, back into the soil and actually help revitalize the soil. So he was working with peanuts as a way to revitalize the soil and revitalize the agricultural industry in the South. Working with peanuts, he developed more than 300 food and industrial uses for them. The next legume we'll take a look at is soybeans. Maybe not so interesting on the surface because they're everywhere, especially in the Midwest here, um, where I'm from. But they've been grown in Asia 
for at least 3,000 years. The pod of the soybean is actually relatively small and contains only a few seeds. However, each plant produces many, many pods, so the soybean is actually quite a productive plant. Soybeans were introduced to the U.S. in the mid-1700s, 1765, but there was little interest in them as a crop. Uh, they're not as flavorful uh, directly to eat as some of the other beans, and so it wasn't until the 20s that the interest in soybeans in the U.S. grew um, as a commercial crop. Uh, they got a big boost in World War II when, because of the war, trade with um, the Middle East became impossible. Um, the Mediterranean region where we would get olive oil and the uh, um, Middle East where we would get palm oils, that trade was um, suspended, was impossible to do because of the uh, sinking of the ships in World War II. So soybean oil was used in large scale for the first time in the U.S. Um, during World War II as a substitute for those other oils. And the United States is now the world's largest producer of soybeans. Um, some of the products that are made from soybeans, soy oil, soy meal or flour, soy sauce, tofu, soy milk, toasted soybeans are becoming more popular as a snack food. Soy protein, to be added to things that are lower in protein, and biofuels. The soy, uh, soybean contains a fairly large amount of oil. Um, that oil can be pressed from the beans um, and instead of used as soy oil, can be made into a uh, form of biodiesel. Um, and research is underway in converting the lignocellulose uh, structure of the plant itself um, into ethanol. The third uh, legume we're going to look at is one that here in the United States uh, we don't see uh, unless you're in the extreme southern portions uh, where it may be grown occasionally as an ornamental is a plant called Lucana. This is a tree and the pods of the tree were consumed as food in South America. And you can see the pods here. Again, you can tell there's a single row of seeds inside this pod. There are lots and lots of seeds in each pod. Also notice these leaves that are pinnately compound. In this case, they're actually bipinnately compound. This whole area here is one leaf. This is the central stem of the leaf. Coming off of that are these little side stems. And then coming off of that are these leaflets. And this is a fairly typical leaf structure for legume. The lucana tree, some varieties of the lucana tree, can grow as much as 30 feet in a single year. The wood is grown commercially and can be used in furniture and is used quite a bit for uh, paper pulp. As a legume, it has the ability to fix nitrogen in the soil and there's a high nitrogen content in the leaves, so the leaves can be stripped from the plants and spread on the ground and used directly as fertilizer. So here's a plant that offers food, wood, fertilizer, um, and is extremely fast growing, um, native to the uh, tropical regions of the Americas. Here we have a table from the USDA that shows consumption of major vegetable oils uh, from a few years ago, 2011. If we look down the table, we see that worldwide Palm oil is still the largest consumption by metric ton. Second place goes to soybean. And soybean is climbing that ladder. 
because soybean is, is faster and easier to produce, um, makes large crops. The legume that we're probably all most familiar with would be beans, beans and peas. Here we see a typical bean plant. We see the bilaterally symmetrical flowers. We see the fruit as a pod containing a single row of seeds. And you can often see the outline of the seeds inside the pods. Beans encompass a huge variety of plants, from lima beans to the green beans we eat to pinto beans to all sorts of beans. So it's difficult to talk about beans sort of as a single entity. But maybe the most consumed legume uh, after soybeans in the world.